Tonight is a rain, rain, go away kind of night in MLB DFS because my top two stacks are both playing in a game where there's a chance it could get postponed. And my number three stack behind them is also in a game that is at risk. And it sounds like those games are probably going to play. So we should be all right to proceed forward with those stacks. But I still would like to have a bit more certainty. So, you know, if it's if you got an anti rain dance, you can do anything like that. A vortex theory, whatever it may be. Let's try to conjure up some good weather in Baltimore and New York to get these games in. Let us stack some fun teams and have some fun tonight in MLB DFS. We'll see what happens. We'll break down some alternatives should the weather get wonky and get you ready for Monday night in MLB DFS. Welcome on into the solo shot. That's right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network and NumberFire.com. My name is Jim Sonis. I am a senior writer and analyst for NumberFire, here to break down Monday's six-game main slate. We're locked set for 7.05 p.m. Eastern for today. Let's begin with those weather notes here. The big one is in Baltimore for the Orioles and Reds. Some of the storms could be strong, which means I'm worried that they may decide to not play this game in the interest of safety, which is smart. You know, safety is always a good thing. I just really want to stack it, so I'm probably going to risk it. I was reading Kevin Roth, the Roto Grinders breakdown. Kevin Roth, the uh, the uh, chief meteorologist over at Roto Grinders, does a great job analyzing weather as it pertains to MLB. He says this game should be able to play, maybe with a delay, but for offenses. I don't care about that too much. So I just need to make sure they get that game in. Sounds like they should, but still dicier than I like it to be. He says there's higher risk in New York for the Mets and the Brewers for that game. Um, you know, I think it seems similar again where they should be able to play, but more risk there that game is postponed. So we'll break down teams you can use should both those games wind up being in danger. We'll break down what to do with those games if they wind up being okay and get you ready for tonight here in just one second. But first, a reminder to make sure you're subscribed to the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed wherever you get your podcast. We're here every weekday breaking down MLB DFS. Tomorrow, we're talking PGA DFS with Brandon Gadula. And we also have a UFC for select events via Austin Swain, all right here in the Number Fire Daily Fantasy Podcast feed. So go subscribe to that wherever you get your podcasts. If you like what you hear, leave us a five-star rating on Apple Podcasts or Spotify. Also check us out in the video version over on the FanDuel YouTube page or the FanDuel TV Plus app. Baseball season is in full swing, and there's no better place to get in on the action than FanDuel, America's number one sports book. Because right now, new customers, Get a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars. It's up to one thousand dollars back in bonus bets if your first bet doesn't win. So don't miss your chance to snag a no sweat first bet up to one thousand dollars when you join FanDuel today. FanDuel, official sports betting partner of Major League Baseball. Major League Baseball trademarks used with permission. Must be twenty one plus and present in select states. First online real money wager only. Ten dollar deposit required. Refund issued as non-withdrawable bonus bets that expire seven days after receipt. Restrictions apply. See whole terms at FanDuel.com slash sportsbook. FanDuel is offering online sports wagering in Kansas under an agreement with Kansas Star Casino LLC. Gambling problem? Call 1-800-GAMBLER or visit FanDuel.com slash RG. In Arizona, 1-800-NEXT-STEP or text next step to 533-42. In Connecticut, 1-888-789-7777. Or visit ccpg.org slash chat. In Indiana, 1-800-9-WIPIT. In Wyoming and Kansas, 1-800-522-4700. Or in Kansas, ksgamblinghealth.com. Louisiana is 1-877-770-STOP. In Massachusetts, gamblinghelplinema.org. Or call 800-327-5050 for 24-7 support. In Maryland, mdgamblinghealth.org. In New York, 1-877-8-HOPE-NY or text HOPE-NY. And in West Virginia, go to 1-800-GAMBLER.net. Pitching preview, pitching a lot more stable for today than these stacks are because the pitchers are primarily in games with okay weather. That begins at the top with Spencer Strider coming in with a salary of $11,300, followed by Luis Castillo at 10 6. Sonny Gray is $10,100, followed by Dylan Cease at 96. Andrew Heaney's 92, with Reed Detmers and Justin Verlander as the other guys at $8,000 or higher. Now, Spencer Strider has definitely been in a, a rut of late. His ERA is now up to nine or 3.93 for the full season. And he's had a good number of starts where if you're watching it, he's kind of looked off. Hasn't looked like the Strider we saw last year and early on this year. I just don't know if we can avoid him for tonight. I'd love to because it's been tough for sure. But 
it's it's a really good matchup, especially for strikeouts. And I really think we want to be here. He's facing the Twins, and they are a super high strikeout team. Twins active roster has a 29% strikeout rate against righties this year, which is the highest mark on the slate by more than three percentage points. That's a massive boost for an opposing pitcher. And Strider is also himself the highest strikeout guy in the slate. He's the highest strikeout guy in every slate, but uh, regardless, he is the highest guy here too. Even if we lop off the early couple starts this year, he still is the highest strikeout guy by a wide margin. In 10 starts with the VLO down a bit from where it was in April, Strider still has a 37% strikeout rate, which is eight percentage points higher than everybody else in the slate. And he has a 2.85 skill interactive ERA. Now he is letting up a lot of hard contact and fly balls, which is why he's had those bad starts in the stretch. And he could have that again tonight because the twins have batters who can hurt you if you make mistakes. But I have Strider projected for 9.8 strikeouts. Nobody else is above 6.5. So I agree with the concerns. It is definitely not ideal to have such rocky form for a guy whose salary is 11-3, and it could happen again. But I just can't turn down that huge of a strikeout projection on a slate where there are just 12 total pitchers. So to me, despite the issues, Spencer Strider is still my number one guy for tonight, and I feel good about him despite the fact I know an implosion, once again, is still very much within his range of outcomes. The top alternative to Strider, at least for me, is going to be Luis Castillo. I think he's pretty safe, and he doesn't he doesn't have the same upside, but I do think the safety, if you're pivoting, at least has some value. Castillo's facing the Nationals, who are a low strikeout team, but everything else lines up really well. The Nationals, 18% strikeout rate against righties, which is the lowest in the slate, but a 90 WRC+, plus, a 136 ISO, and a 33% fly ball rate. So... They put the ball in play a ton, but they do nothing with it. That's good for Castillo because that's been his biggest issue this year has been letting up too much hard contact and too many fly balls. And that's even true when we look at just the sample since his velocity got back to normal. He always takes a while to ramp up his velo at the beginning of the year, probably to avoid injury. It's probably pretty smart. Um, But even since then, a lot of hard contact and a lot of fly balls. Everything else has been fine. He has a 29% strikeout rate in those seven starts. He's hit double-digit strikeouts twice. It's just not a great matchup for strikeouts. So Castillo is second in strikeout projection for me, and that's enough to make him the top pivot, but I'm going to prefer Strider for the strikeouts. So to me, it's Strider 1, Castillo 2, as far as the studs go for tonight. The top value for tonight's slate is a guy I've tried stacking against a couple times this year, and I'm done with that because Reed Detmers faced a bunch of tough teams, and he shut down a lot of them. So I think we want to go back to him as a pitcher tonight at $8,500. Detmers is facing the White Sox, and they're a pretty good team against lefties still with a 104 WRC+. plus. But for Detmers, that's a step down because his past five starts have come against the Marlins, Astros, Cubs, Rangers, and Dodgers. All five of those teams have a WRC plus of at least 108 against lefties so far this year. So it's been a really a murderer's row for Detmers. And in those five starts, he has a 2.83 ERA. He had eight strikeouts in three of them, which is super, super impressive. Now, Detmers, I think, does still let up too much hard contact, and that's why I stacked against him in a couple of those games earlier on this year. But it's still we're still getting compensated for that via the lower salary. Again, $8,500. It's accounted for, and he has upside. I have Detmers projected for eight or 6.3 strikeouts here, which ranks third behind Castillo and Strider. Strider being one, Castillo two, and he's right behind Castillo. So if I'm not going to use Strider, I think I'm more likely to take the savings on Detmers, jump all the way down to 85, and give myself a different lineup where I can get to high upside batters and stuff like that within my lineup. And Detmers gets me there. So to me, I think for 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 tournaments tonight, my rankings are Strider 1, Detmers 2, Castillo 3, and I do feel pretty good about that just because I think Strider and Detmers give me good strikeout projections relative to the salaries they carry for tonight. So pitching again, pretty solid, no real weather concerns there. Let's talk about the weather concerns when it comes to stacks. Uh, I think the Orioles should be able to play tonight uh, based on the forecast that Kevin Roth put out there or again over Rotor Grinders. And I'm hoping they do because I really want to stack not just the Orioles, but this game in general. So we'll talk about the Orioles here because they're my top stack. But 
Uh, I'll talk about the Reds and things to watch. I think they would be ranked second for me, all else equal. If I can get this game to be good to go, we'll be on both these sides for sure. Let's start with the Orioles here uh, and talk about why they're so enticing. They're facing Brandon Williamson, who has struggled since coming up to the big leagues. His results have been okay, but the peripherals are pretty rough. Across seven starts, he has a 6.72 expected ERA. It's primarily up there thanks to a 48% hard hit rate. But Williamson is also letting up fly balls, not getting strikeouts. He hasn't had any implosion games yet. The closest one was uh, six earned runs to the Dodgers. But I do think a seven earned run outing and three innings is within his range of outcomes. Orioles, very good team against lefties with a 113 WRC+. plus. They draw a ton of walks. So I think they're going to flood the base paths here. And they do have some guys who can do some damage if they do wind up doing that. So the Orioles are the preferred side here. I like their matchup a bit more, but I'd love the Reds if I were able to get there too. So to me, Orioles won, Reds two, if we assume this game is good to go for tonight. Within this Orioles offense, they're calling up Jordan Westberg. And as of 920 Eastern this morning, Westberg is not in the player pool over at FanDuel.com, but they have been adding guys uh, for most of the season. Guys similar to this, like L.A. De La Cruz, was not in the player pool when he first got called up, and they did add him. So I think Westberg will probably be in there before first pitch. If he does, if, if he is, I, I want to be on there because he's a righty. So you'd assume he'd be in there to face a lefty. He has 18 home runs and six steals in AAA this year with a 51% hard hit rate. Westberg may wind up striking out too much in the majors, but... I'm on board with him regardless, assuming his salary is not unreasonable and assuming he does wind up being added to the player pool um, and he is in the lineup. So I would check back on that later on. Not in there as of right now, but I think he will be. And I want to be on Westberg if he is indeed added later on. So as mentioned, Orioles are one. Reds would be two if we get the all clear on that game. But I don't want to suck up two stacking spots on a game that might be dicey. So let's put the Orioles there. Second one is also in a dicey game, but hopefully by splitting the ticket here, we can at least get one of these games to play. I like the Mets, and I think that they'd be my number three stack behind the Reds if we get the all clear on both for weather for tonight. So let's talk about the Mets here. They're facing Colin Ray. Ray, I think, is better now than what he was his first in the rotation. He's using more sinkers now, and it's led to some solid outings, but his ERA in the stretch is still 4.84. He's let up four in runs in four out of seven games, and his hard hit rate is 44%. So even with the sinker being in play, his fly ball rate is 37%. That's fine for stacking. It's not as high as you'd like it, but it's still fine. And we've seen Ray really struggle with lefties. And the Mets have enough of those guys to take advantage. They're not their best players by any means, but um, they're uh, they're fine. Lefties have a 232 ISO against Ray this year and a lot of fly balls. So obviously not great for Pete Alonso, but beyond that, I think it is okay. So again, you'll want to check the weather here to make sure we get the green light. But if we do, I think the Mets would be number three for me for stacking behind the Orioles and the Reds. The lefties here also do carry pretty reasonable salaries. Francisco Lindor, the switch hitter, is $3,400. Brandon Nimmo, $31. You know, not typically the most powerful guy, but he's been a bit, bit better in that regard this year. Can steal some bases. Um, I think he's fine at 31 Dan Vogelbach is 24 uh, hundred dollars. I think that's fine. Brett Beatty, he shifts up in the lineup a bit. Not itchy to use Jeff McNeil specifically because he doesn't make as much hard contact as Beatty does, but we can use the lefties here, uh, and feel pretty good about that. And I think we'll still be able to get to Alonzo as well. So, primarily on the lefties, along with Alonzo as the core plays, and then maybe mixing the other righties after we get to the lefties and switch hitters. No weather concerns tonight for the Rangers. Uh, they have a retractable roof, so they should be good to go. And I think they're going to be the top no weather stack of the night. We'll talk through some other no weather stacks later on, just in case both uh, the Orioles and the Mets wind up being in bad situations. Rangers are facing Matthew Boyd. He's a guy I think we can stack against, despite some really encouraging starts recently. Boyd in his past four starts has games of nine, eight, and seven strikeouts. Those are really good. but. He still had up some runs in those games. The most relevant sample for Boyd is his past 10 starts and using more change-ups there uh, than he was in his first four games. And in that time, he has a 5.79 ERA despite the increase in strikeouts. He has a 44% fly ball rate, and that can get him in trouble where one mistake leads to a lot of runs. And that's a tough issue to have here because the Rangers have a 136 WRC plus against lefties and a 183 ISO, which means they're a team 
that can hurt you in a hurry. Boyd is making gains, but he's in a tough matchup tonight. We saw the Rangers face Boyd uh, back in May, and in that game, five earned runs across six innings, issued too many walks, and got punished for it. So to me, the Rangers are a quality stack with no weather concerns for tonight and would be my top stack if we get bad news in the weather for the Mets and the Orioles games. I want to talk Ezekiel Duran here quickly. He's probably going to hit lower in the order. They likely are going to probably bat him eighth because they have been so far. But I really do like Duran a lot as a value. He has a 250 ISO against lefties. And that is a small sample, but he's also at righties well. And he will run a bit. So for $2,800, I think we can feel good about him, even while he's hitting lower in the order. So Ezekiel Duran, $2,800, probably going to bat eighth. I still think that he's a good play for tonight, despite that, especially if you want to jam in all the high salary Rangers we have there. So to me, Duran, a fine value play, despite the fact he will bat lower in the order. Let's go down to things to watch and talk about the weather a bit more here and talk about the Reds and why I like them and would put them second if I were allowed to rank things just straight up. They're facing Cole Irvin, who has a 7.71 ERA in seven outings this year. His skill interactive ERA is better, uh, but it's also not good enough where we need to avoid him. The Reds active roster up to a 114 WRC plus against lefties. So if we can, I want to stack both sides of this game and just feel good about that. Uh, but be sure to check back on the weather later on uh, to see if we can actually do that with a good amount of confidence. Another stack we can turn to if the weather in Baltimore, uh, New York winds up being bad is the Mariners. They're facing Trevor Williams, who it's a good matchup for them, but they're just a pretty bad offense right now. I'm still okay with them because of the matchup, and I, I will use them if we had bad weather elsewhere, but their struggles with the dish are why I got I had them behind the Rangers for things. The Rangers have been much better against lefties than the Mariners have been against righties. I also think you consider the Braves above the Mariners as the, the other good weather stack. They're facing Sonny Gray, and Gray is a really good pitcher, but he's struggling right now. He's been using more sinkers and fewer curveballs his past eight starts. Uh, he has a 4.53 skill interactive ERA in that time. He's getting grounders, which is why the results have still been fine. But now he's going on the road, facing a very good offense. I think we could see him slip a bit. So I do think the Braves are acceptable should we get bad news on those two rain games. So to me, the weather is fine stacks would be Baltimore, followed by the Reds, followed by the Mets. If the weather winds up being bad for both those games, I'd rank the stacks Rangers 1, I'd probably go Braves two and then Mariners three in terms of the stacks for tonight. Hopefully we get good weather though, because I really, really want to stack that Orioles Reds game. Let's finish up with the dinger calls for tonight. Uh, let's start with the boring one. And that is one in a game that should play be good to go. That is Adelis Garcia facing off Matthew with Matthew Boyd. A lot of fly balls there. Garcia can crush anybody, but especially a lefty. So the boring home run call Adelis Garcia for tonight. The fun one, Let's go Jordan Westbrook in his MLB debut. Um, his odds at FanDuel Sportsbook, I think, are plus 480. So you're not going to catch them sleeping there by any means, but um, still like it as far as a fun recommendation. Hopefully he's out of the player pool. We can get there uh, for him, but we'll go with Adelis Garcia and Jordan Westbrook as the homer calls for tonight. That's all we got here for today on the solo shot. Once again, do not forget to subscribe to the number fire daily fantasy podcast feed, wherever you get your podcasts. Also check us out on the FanDuel YouTube page and on the FanDuel TV plus app. And do not forget again to check out the weather for Baltimore and New York later on to make sure those games are good to go. If you've got any questions for me, I am on Twitter at Jim Sonnes, J-I-M-S-A-N-N-E-S. And you can also follow the FanDuel Podcast Network at FanDuel Podcast. I want to thank you all for tuning in for today. Good luck to you with your MLB DFS lineups for tonight. We'll talk to you once again tomorrow to break down a robust Tuesday slate. This has been the solo shot right here on the FanDuel Podcast Network.